Yo guys, what is going on? For MLB Baseball Vlogs and The Real Sports Talk, myself and Justin would like to welcome you into the first team in our second annual 30 Clubs in 30 Days MLB Recap. For the next month, Every day we will be previewing a different MLB team, giving you our thoughts about the team, what their season is going to be, but basically everything that you could possibly think of about your team will be covered. We're going to be having some experts from each team come on to help us with these previews. We're going to go in order from the worst team to the first team. So today on Monday we are starting with your town, your team, your Houston Astros coming off a season last year that it was very very forget well I don't know if it was forgettable because when you have a season this bad it's tough to forget a 56 and 106 season they traded away their best player Hunter Pence and fired Ed Wade after the season uh, Ed Wade had really gotten a reputation as just making some awful trades uh, really the guy handicapped this franchise for quite a long time with some of the trades that he made the Astros also have a new ownership group, and it was announced that after this season, they will be moving in the American League West, which will balance out the divisions and put five teams in each division. So Justin joins us. Uh, Justin, what's going on, man? Dude, I am excited to bring the MLB Baseball Blogs back. We are back. We are better. We got everything written down. We're all ready for this. The second annual 30 teams and 30 recaps. Very pumped up, man. All right, now let's start this. Their manager, Brad Mills, in two seasons went 132 and 192. Uh, the first season they went 76 and 86, I believe, and then last year, as I said, they went 56 and 106. In two seasons as the manager, and that was after being the Red Sox bench coach for a long time for Terry Francona. Uh, I, I don't know how to gauge exactly how good of a manager Brad Mills has been because I don't think that he's had really any talent to work with. Uh, and the talent he has had has gotten traded away, unfortunately, for him. Uh, I don't think that he's in their long-term plans because usually when you lose these type of amounts of games, you just don't see these managers stay. And when you make a huge move like to another league, like when the Marlins changed their name, went to a new stadium, they got new players, they got a new manager, that's probably eventually what's going to end up happening to the Astros. But when you have a team like this, really, there's no point in bringing in another manager to fail when you already have a guy there that, uh, unfortunately for him, can probably be the guy that fails himself rather than having to bring in another guy and continue to pay Brad Mills. So, Justin, go over some of the key acquirements, as you like to say, key acquisitions for everyone else that the Houston Astros made this offseason. Yes, the, all the greatest key acquirements in my book. Um, Jed Lowry, pretty great um, accusation for this team. Got Kyle Weiland um, acquired in a trade with Boston. Um, Chris Snyder coming over from the Pittsburgh Pirates signed a one-year deal with the 2013 option. Zach Duke coming from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, this move is not really going to help this team at all. Um, you also got LeVon Hernandez, who had a great year last year. Uh, coming over here, they signed him to a minor league contract, and that really surprised me. This guy played a great year last year. Why would you sign him to a minor league contract? That's just silly. This guy could help out this pitching rotation that right now is not the greatest in the major leagues at all. And you, this team right now needs all the help they can get in the pitching rotation and in the bullpen. Yeah, and LeVon Hernandez, what's going to happen? He's going to get an invite to spring training. And let's be real about this. LeVon Hernandez will make this team. He can give you a lot of innings. He'll give you 12 or 13 wins at least. And he pitches very well against certain teams. Obviously, he's not what he was in the 90s and early 2000s with the Giants and the Marlins. But he's had some uh, successful seasons with the Twins and the Nationals over the past, really, seven or eight seasons. And he can still be a pretty solid pitcher. Some of the losses they took this offseason, Clint Barmas signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's not going to kill you. And Mark Melikon, who they traded to acquire Jed Lowry and Kyle Wellens. So, uh, nothing huge in the... Uh, I mean, Jed Lowry has potential as a shortstop, but if he was really that good with the Red Sox, a team who 
has had trouble finding a steady shortstop over the past 10 seasons. Would they have traded him away? Probably not. So, uh, my guess right now is that you're not going to see a huge impact out of any of these guys that they signed this offseason. You'll see some moderate impacts from guys like Chris Snyder, LeVon Hernandez, Jed Lowry. But I don't think it's going to be anything that you look back and say, oh man, that was a great signing this offseason. They really got a steal on him. Uh, Justin will now give you their top two prospects in their farm system and what to look out for with these guys this year. Now, I'm a huge prospect guy. Going over to the prospects for the Houston Astros, they have got a lot of great, talented prospects down in the minor leagues right now. Uh, number one, well, the top two prospects you got to look at is, I'm not going to put this in any in particular order, actually. Um, you got Jared Kozart, the right-handed pitcher. Um, Double A, most likely, sees the fit for him right now. Um, I see maybe next year is a good is a good launching pad for this kid to come up. This year... Give him more time down in the minor leagues. He's going to be a sol He's in the future. He's going to be a solid number two, uh, solid number two pitcher. So just give this guy a little bit more time in the majors. Let him um, redeem himself. Let him get, get maybe if the Astros season is obviously lost here within the next few months into the season, maybe you can start thinking about bringing him up to Triple A. And if he does good in Triple A, maybe by September, maybe give him one or two starts and see what this kid can make up in 2013. Number two, you got to look at Jonathan Siegelton. Um, he also ended up in Double A. Um, he's going to be in Double A, I obviously think this year too. Um, he's an iffy outfielder, but he has a capable. He's capable of hitting 20 to 30 home runs almost immediately when he gets up to the majors. This guy has the power, and a lot of people are comparing him to a surprising first baseman in Adam Dunn. But I want to kill it that far out. Uh, we don't, we don't really know what this guy is made of right now, but. Um, those are the two guys you really got to watch out for here in the, pros in the prospect side of the Houston Astros. Both of these guys were acquired last year in the Hunter Pence trade, one of the trades that Ed Wade seemingly got right now. One of the trades we should be talking about seeing huge prospects for was the Royals wall trade. They did not do a great job getting prospects back in that trade. Uh, they do have one guy, and uh, his name slips on mind. I think he's a shortstop. But ultimately, they have not done a good enough job with the talent that they have traded away between Oswald and Lance Berkman in recouping enough young prospects, which really has set this franchise back for a couple seasons, I think. Jonathan Singleton, I wouldn't compare him to Adam Dunn. I compare him more to Lance Berkman, maybe with a little less power. But he has yeah. patience at the plate, and ultimately he should be a pretty good player. I think a lot of people have concerns over what he can do in the field. They tried to move him to the outfield when he was still in the Phillies farm system last year, and that did not work out. Jared Cozart, uh, some people are worried about his delivery. I think he's going to be a solid pitcher in the MLB for a long time to come, or, or for a lot of years. I don't know if he's going to be an ace. I think that that's what they're counting on. I think he's probably more of a number two starter, but that's not a bad thing. You know, if you can look at a guy in single A right now and say he's going to be a solid number two starter for this team, then you're in a pretty good situation. The problem is the Astros need this guy within the next few years to be that. I would think he's not going to even see the majors this year. In 2014, I think that he'll probably get called up in September. In 2015, at age like 24, is probably when we're going to see this guy full-time in the majors. So let's go over to the Astros lineup now. We'll start at catcher. They have a few candidates with Castro, Quintero, and Chris Snyder. And uh, Chris Snyder coming over from the Pirates uh, had a, in only 34 games last season. Batted 271 with three home runs. So he's a nice piece to have there as one of your catchers. Jason Castro last season in 67 games, 195 at bats. Uh, gave you some decent power, or yeah, some decent power with two home runs and eight RBIs. He walked 22 times, but he only batted 205. So really, at this catcher's position, they're not in good shape for this season. Oh, yeah, man. This catch, the catching position, um, this is one of the questionable positions here in this team. This, the catching position is not that type of power you have in that lineup. I mean, Chris Snyder, he had his deal with injuries last year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Did not really perform as well as the Pirates would have wanted him to. Um, you also got Jason Hamarillo over there who could possibly be getting the job done over there. They don't have Ryan Doman anymore. And Chris Snyder was just out all last year, so that left pretty much Jason Hamarillo. Um, getting the catcher's role. So, 
Looking over at this catching position, um, you got Castro, Quintero, and Snyder. Uh, predicting this as a starting position, uh, who's going to win the starting job, obviously. I'm going to have to go, surprisingly, with Castro. I mean, this guy's been in their minor leagues for a little while now. Came up, I think, last year or a couple years ago. And he really proved himself, and I really think they had, this kid has a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Now, over at first base, you have, and this is a lineup that most people are going to look at and say, who the hell is that guy? Carlos Lee is one of the few guys in this lineup that the name stands out to most people. Throughout his career, he's hit over uh, 300 home runs. He's one home run actually away from 350 for his career. He is in the final year of his deal. He will make about $18 million. Last season, in 155 games, he batted 275 with 18 home runs and 94 RBIs. Obviously, over the last two seasons, he's began to make the transition from left field to first base, and he will be playing first base full-time in all likelihood this season for the Houston Astros. He's still a good hitter, but when you're making $18 million, one of the reasons that he has not been able to be traded away is because he's not worth really what he's produ for what he's producing he's not worth that type of money uh, El Caballo looks to have a good year and I would tend to think that they're gonna trade him at the deadline or over uh, in August in the waiver trade deadline absolutely so what we at the first baseman right yeah looking at first base Carlos Lee um, you got Downs you got Brett Wallace now Brett Wallace I could have thought that maybe you could have put um, Carlos Lee, probably back at left field for a little while. Put Brett Wall, see what this kid got. This kid can play great defense. Give him some time. This kid's going to be something you really want to look out for. Um, but you got up uh, a guy named Martinez. I think his name is J.D. Martinez. Um, do not know a whole lot about this guy, so let's just see what the, yeah, uh, the also, season has ahead of this guy. They also have Matt Downs there, who is a candidate to play first base. He had, he had a decent season last year, 276, 10 home runs. He's more of a bench bat. Brett Wallace was supposed to be a huge prospect. He was one of the guys traded away from the Cardinals. He went to the Oakland A's for um, Matt Holliday. And then, uh, I forget exactly how he ended up with the Astros, but so far he has not produced it the way uh, he was originally expected to. At an age 26 now, it's kind of time, or 25, he'll be 26 in uh July. It's kind of time that this guy's got to kind of put in the direction of what his career is going to ultimately end up being. Brett Wallace, nice guy. We have uh, might be getting him on for an interview within the next few weeks, so uh, stay tuned for that. At second base, we go to Jose Altuve, and I, I'm sorry if I pronounce some of these names wrong. I, I watch the Astros, I watch every team, but the Astros are really playing with a lot of guys that not only aren't household names, but a lot of people haven't even heard of these guys. In uh, 57 games last year, he had 276 with two home runs and 12 RBIs. Look, I mean, th th this is the type of player that is why the Astros were 56 and 106 last year. This is a guy who, in most teams, probably would not be in the major leagues. Yeah. Um, I don't really know much about Alatuve. Uh, there's just really nothing I can really get on him right now. I, all, I got, all that I have to do really is just if I can learn what this dude can, what this guy can do. Um, look at his uh, hitting mechanics. So right now I can't really say nothing. I can't say anything positive. Can't say anything negative about him. We just have to wait and see. And Matt Downs will also back him up there. So he. Probably, I, I, my guess is that Matt Downs ultimately will end up seeing a lot of the playing time. Over at shortstop, you talk about Jed Lowry, a guy who had some moderate success in his career with the Red Sox and then was traded away. In 2008, he hit uh, for 258 with two home runs. Uh, last season, in 2011, 252 with six home runs. He's not a great hitter, but he's a pretty, pretty solid shortstop. Oh, yeah, I mean, he plays great defense over at the shortstop position. He had a great start to the season last year with Boston, and I think he's going to have another. He's going to start off the season very, very good as well. So if you're a fantasy player, actually, um, if you're thinking about maybe in the later rounds and Jed Lowry's still available, he's good to have for maybe about a month into the season because he can uh, get you the RBIs. He's probably maybe a good, maybe a solid number three bat in that lineup. Yeah, well, in that lineup, in any other lineup, he's a solid number eight hitter for the most part. 
Uh, Marwin Gonzalez, who is a solid, or who will be 23 before the season begins, he will be the backup, so uh, he will be making his major league debut whenever he gets up, so there's nothing really to go off. At short, or at third base, you got Jimmy Paredes. Last season in 46 games, he had 286 with two home runs and 18 RBIs. Um, another guy that there's really not a ton to go off of, but uh, what I saw out of this guy last year makes me think that he could be a pretty solid MLB player over the next few seasons. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to pronounce the guy. When I first heard about this guy, I called him Jimmy Padres because it sounded pretty exactly close to it, kind of. It's, but I, I, to this day, I still cannot pronounce it like Padres or something like that. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but this guy really has it. I saw a lot of film while looking at He even played last year before the season um, was coming to an end. Late September call-up, and this guy is getting a shot right now, and I hope he can really uh, raise some eyebrows in that head coaching staff for the Houston Astros. You got Chris Johnson backing him up over there, so he's going to get he's going to get a lot of uh, help from Chris Johnson. Out in left field, Justin talked about J.D. Martinez at first base some. For the most part, we'll see J.D. Martinez in left field next se or this season. In 53 games last year, he had 274 with 6 home runs and 35 RBIs. Another really young guy. He has a lot of potential over the next few years. And uh, basically, that's what we're getting at with most of these Astros guys, is there's not a ton to go off of because most of them, Starting this year were September Cops last year, or they were bench players last year. Oh yeah, so that you, yeah, seriously. So, J, was, uh, Jack Cuss. I was just start off with that Jack Cuss, who's backing him up in left field. Um, Jack Cuss, he's coming over. I don't. I think from the Seattle Mariners. Um, he's gonna. He provides. He's gonna help out these young. Um, outfielders like just like Jordan Schaefer, uh, Brian Bourgeois, and JD Martinez. So you you have a nice veteran outfielder to help these guys out. So the the bench guys, the, there's really nothing I can really say about this. This bench, I don't really know much about them. So yeah, and what I Justin apologize. meant there, not Brian Bourgeois. Brian Bogusevic is in right field, and Jason Bourgeois will also be in left field. Uh, Jack Cuss brings some pop, and in the 90s, he brought some steroids, too. So, hey, maybe the Astros do have a chance. In center field, speaking of former drug test failures, Jordan Schaefer, who at one time was a top prospect for the Atlanta Braves, kind of fizzled out there. He did fail an HGH test in the minor leagues. Uh, last season, in 82 games, he had 242 with two home runs. This is the guy who I really look at as the X factor for this team. If he can have a good season, I still think that this is a career that we could see get back on track. He's only 25 years old, and he has a de he has actually a really nice swing, and he does have some pop for this team. I could see 15 to 20 home runs if he has a nice season this year. If he has a nice season this year, I would really see... Jordan Schaefer. He doesn't. He doesn't really have that power to him. I can see maybe at maximum maybe ten or eleven. I mean, if he's having a great season, yes, he can hit up to like maybe fifteen, sixteen home runs. But he is a speedy outfielder. We, we saw it in the first uh, couple of months when he was with the Atlanta Braves. I think a couple of years ago. So this guy is really going to watch out for hitting wise. But he's not my guy to watch for the Houston Astros this season. In right field, then, you got Brian Bogusevic. Also in center field, you do have Jason Bourgeois also backing him up. Brian Bogusevic is one of the players that was with the Astros for a decent amount of time last year. In almost 90 games, he had 287 with four home runs and 15 RBIs. And again, as me and Justin have said, there's not a ton to go off of with this guy. He's a really young, or no, he's not really young. He's like 27. We don't know what he's going to be until we see a, a long period of what this guy can do. So that basically covers our lineup. And what you get out of that is that the lineup does not exactly blow you away. It, it's not a terrible... Oh, uh, yeah, it, it kind of is. I mean, I, I don't want to have Astros... Very dumb. I don't want to have Astros fans on my case, but in all reality, if I'm being honest, the lineup is not good enough. Uh, I, I think that this is probably the worst lineup in the MLB going into it. And in three years, if you put the same lineup out there, it might not be that way, but the lineup 
right now with a lot of these young guys does not look very impressive. We'll go to the starting rotation now, led by Brett Myers, who had a solid first season with the Astros. The 30-year-old in his second season after signing a three-year extension went 7-14 and with a 4.46 ERA in 216 innings pitch. Certainly a down year for Brett Myers last year. Absolutely. This was a guy who the year prior to last season was already in talk to possibly winning the Cy Young Award, but this last season, it was just awful. This guy, he did have 200, over 200 innings pitched, but when you look at his record and his ERA, nothing really rose any eyebrows. Um, he was 714, 446 ERA. I mean, this guy totally had a complete opposite year from two years ago. Yeah, that's certainly uh, obvious, and he could be a potential trade piece. The thing is, he cannot pitch like he did last year because he makes a decent amount of money, and no one's going to want to take on, I believe, he'll have one year left of a contract after the season if he's not producing the way that they need him to. In yeah, let me uh, cut you off here for a second. Here, um, you said uh, Jordan Schaefer is your guy. You got to look out for um, in this year's. I'm look. I'm going to go with Brett Wy uh, Brett Ma Brett Wallace Brett Myers here. This guy is going to have a big chip on his chest this year. I mean, he, I guarantee you, he possibly does want to get out of there, but if this team is going to hold together when it comes to big games, it's going to be Brett Myers. I think this guy is going to is the ace of this pitching rotation. It is the ace of this organiz, uh, pitching rotation. You also got Wandy Rodriguez. It's also a big question if that guy is even going to be in the organization by the trade deadline. Yeah, and Wandy Rodriguez is a guy we heard the Yankees interested. That cooled down after they got Michael Pineda. But Wandy Rodriguez, who makes a good amount of money last year, 11 and 11, 3.49 ERA. That's the type of pitcher that a lot of teams want on their team. In 2010, he had a 3.60 ERA. 2009, 3.02. 2008, 3.54. So since a somewhat rocky start to his career from 2005 to 2007, this guy's been pretty consistent. Uh, on a contender, he's probably a number three or four starter, and the reason I'm even saying that is because it's not because I think the Astros are going to be a contender. It's because ultimately, this guy is going to be traded, and what the Astros need to do is realize that they will have interest in this guy. They do need to trade him, but they need to go ahead and not do what they did for the Royals while trade and just basically give him away for free. You need to get a big... A decent prospect, a guy who can come up and be a starter for your team in the MLB at the very least, and maybe a few other guys that will have some potential over the next few seasons. Absolutely. Juan Rodriguez last year was just all over trade talks. Oh, where is he going to go? I heard the Rockies. He got, actually, got, actually got traded, uh, but it didn't really go through. Um, the Rockies had interest in him. I don't know who, uh, who they actually got gave up, but... I think Juan Rodriguez, if he's going to get traded, I can probably see him going over to the Rockies. But they're going to have to give a nice piece for him. I mean, this ro this rotation, they really need a big bat right now. The pitching rotation, I mean, Bud Norris, Sosa, J.A. Hat, Jordan Lyles. I mean, Jordan Lyles within the next maybe a year, maybe this year, if he can really raise some eyebrows because he was, um, I think, a July call-up last year. Um, he'd actually pretty pitch decent, but I think if you give this kid a shot um, – he could be something, but going back to Juan Rodriguez, this if he's going to get traded, you really need a big bat or a pretty decent bat for Juan D. Rodriguez because Juan D. Rodriguez still is coming near the prime of his career, and he's really going to show it here within the next few seasons. So I think if the Astros are going to trade him, they're going to really need to trade him for like a hitter, not a pitcher. All right, and then we talk about number three, Bud Norris, who actually is a pretty decent number three, six and eleven. But that record lies. He had a three seventy seven ERA. I think that he's a pretty solid pitcher, and this is a guy who is not very old. He's about twenty six years old, and he could be in the long term plans for this team as a solid number three starter once this team is ready to contend in uh, four or five years or so. Yeah, Bud Norris. I mean, he spent some, most probably some of last year. I didn't really follow the Astros a whole lot last year. But this year, I'm going to be all into baseball. Bud Norris last year, 6-11, and 11, 31 games. Um, I think he spent a minor time down in the minor leagues. I think, when he got, I think he got injured a little bit last year, which had him spend time in the minors. He did appear in 31 games, 6-11. and 11. Um, His ERA was actually down a little bit at 377. I think this kid could possibly be a solid 
maybe three, and possibly maybe a two once his years start advancing more. And we'll just have to see what this kid is really made of this year. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, number four, you have Henry Sosa, and I'm not even gonna go too far into this. He made his major league debut last year, three and five, the five twenty-three ERA. What do you want me to say? At number five, you got J Happ. It is actually pronounced J. That's how he always said that he wanted it pronounced. J Happ had a really, really phenomenal. He was up and down with the Phillies for a few years, and then in 2009, he really broke out. 12 and 4, 293 ERA finished, I believe, third in Rookie of the Year voting, and then the next season he was plagued with injuries, came back, made one start, and then all of a sudden he was the biggest piece in the uh, Roy Oswald trade, and that that's just another awful job by uh, Ed Wade, to, to go ahead and trade for a guy who has made one start in the last few months, to move on from one of the best pitchers in your franchise's history. And Jay App wouldn't have been a bad piece if he was the third, second or third piece in this trade. But to make Jay App the best piece in this trade, are you kidding me? And uh, it appears that since his rookie season, teams have figured this guy out. And that happens with a lot of pitchers. Last season, he was 6-15 and with a 5.35 ERA. And I know a lot of people say, well, obviously going from the Phillies to the Astros, he's not going to pitch as well. Look, I buy into the fact that you pitch a little bit better when you have good run support. But the bottom line is that you don't have a 5.35 ERA because your team's not hitting. You have a 5.35 ERA because you haven't done a good enough job pitching. Yeah, um, you pretty much covered that with J.A. Hat. But I'm going to talk about uh, the probably there could be a competition for a pitching uh, role in the pitching rotation this year. You got Wyland, Lyles, and Harrell. Now, you're, when you're looking at this, Wyland, we don't know much about. Lyles, I do know a lot about. And Harrell, um, he's all right. Um, but if you're looking possibly to contend for that number five role, you got to look at Jordan Lyles in this one. I think J.A. Happ should possibly move into the Sosa role, move Sosa into the bullpen. I think J.A. Happ will be a solid number four pitcher for this team. But you really got to really gotta put up like Jordan Lyles at number five. This kid has what it takes. He has spent the last couple of years down in the minor leagues. He's really showed it down in the minor leagues. Give this kid a shot. Let's see what this kid is made of. And if it doesn't really, if it doesn't work, possibly move J.A. Happ or J. Happ back to the number five role. Pull Sosa back at number four. All right, now we'll look at the bullpen, which will be headed by closer Brandon Lyon in his third season, I believe, with the Astros. Let me look that. Yeah, this is his third season in the Astros. First year, he had a pretty nice year, 6-6, six and six, and uh, a I'm looking for the ERA. A three twelve ERA, 20 saves. Last year, holy shit, was that a nightmare. In 15 games, 3-3 three and three with an 11-48 ERA and 4 saves. I assume that he got injured and missed most of the season because most closers end up getting more work than he did. He is in the final year of a three-year deal. The rest of the bullpen, you talk about guys like Wilson, uh, Wilton Lopez, my bad. You got Juan Abreu, you got Drew C David Carpenter, my bad. And... Uh, Sergio Escalona and Inouye Rodriguez. So uh, a, bu a bullpen of guys that aren't necessarily huge names, but when are bullpen guys ever huge names until they become very good pitchers? Absolutely, man. Well, you got to go straight into talking about the closer right now. Brandon Lyon, my God, last year, it was terrible. This guy it should not be the closer heading into this season. You really got to start thinking over to guys like Wilton, I think, is it Wilton Lopez you said his name was? Yeah. you just got, you got to start thinking about changing your closer role to possibly to Wilton Lopez. This guy, I think he has what it takes to be the closer. I think he's going to be a better closer right now than Brandon Lyon. I don't think, it's, unless Brandon Lyon really shows that he totally has changed during spring training, which is coming up here within the next few weeks, I would, right now, would not put Brandon Lyon in as closer right now. I'll give it to Wilton Lopez. Yeah, and overall, the, the reason that he is the closer, let's be real, is that the Astros have had some financial concerns, obviously with the changing of the guard at the ownership position, and also the Astros 
A, do not necessarily need to go get another closer because they're not going to contend whether they get another closer or not. And B, honestly, no one wants to come to the Astros the way they are right now. And that's a far cry from what it was five or six years ago when they had Roger Clemens and Andy Pettit and guys like that. But in reality, that's kind of the deal there. Uh, Brandon Lyon could possibly be uh, traded away at the end of this season, so we'll have to see what goes down there. Yeah, we'll just have to see what goes down for the rest of this team. This team, right now, it has a lot of young And I meant at the trade deadline, not at the end of the season. Yeah, well, I'm just going to go over uh, overall. We'll just see what this team is really... What, what are we going to expect from the Houston Nationals this year? Um, they have a lot of young talent, they have great young talent, and let's just see if these got if these young, talented players can uh, really raise some eyebrows this year. So, Tim, let's end it off with this, and then we're going to go play a little game of rapid fire with the Houston Astros. Give us a prediction. Uh, I'm going to say between 65 and 70 wins, and really I think it is very unlikely that they get to 70 wins unless they have a breakout player on this team. In my opinion, the Astros will probably finish with the worst record again this season, and Brad Mills will not make it past August. I have to agree with you right there, but I say maybe 61 to 50, uh, 59 to 61 wins. I mean, this team, we'll just have to wait with this rookie. Uh, this, now, I'm, I'm gonna, right now, I'm going to call him a rookie team, besides Carlos Lee, who is the veteran of this team. This team is filled with young talent, and they're kind of like a rookie team. So right now, I'm going to call them the rookie team. Now we're going to play a little game called Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire is where I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions about the Houston Astros. I think there's about four or five questions I'm going to ask him. So, Tim, and maybe a word or less, yes or no, I'm going to give you some questions, and we're going to start from here. Will Brett Myers win above 15 games? Uh, I'm going to say no. I think he'll win 13 or 14, but not up to 15. Who's good? Do you think Jordan Schaefer is going to have up to 14 home runs this year? Yeah, I'll give Jordan Schaefer about 15 home runs. I think he will have a nice season. Carlos Lee, will he retire at the end of the season? No, he's not going to retire. He's 35, but he's still got something left in the tank. He'll probably go be a DH for a lower team in the American League. He's still got some pop left, and he'll probably get traded to a contender. But the Astros will have to take on a fair amount of that contract to get anything in return for him. All right, talking to the future, last question. Will the Astros be a contender here within the next three to four years? I don't see it because... They've, they do have some nice pieces coming up, but the problem is they don't have a lot of depth because they made some awful trades over the past few seasons. And uh, that's basically it. I'm Tim. He's Justin. Tomorrow we will be previewing the Minnesota Twins. Hashtag deuces.